Hello, everyone, and welcome to Victory Update for May 20th, 2020. My name is Tim Fox. Thank you for joining us here on the Victory Channel and on the Victory Channel Facebook page, which we're now streaming live all these programs. We thank you for joining us for that. I am joined today by my good friend, Pastor John Jester. Good day, sir. Hey, Tim, how are you doing? Well, I am doing great. You know, it's always a joy to be with you because you always bring uh, a spirit of joy with you wherever you go. I've well, never been around God you more smiling and full of joy. Praise God for that. You know, it's a choice. You got to choose to yes, smile. Yes, absolutely. Amen. Is. There's absolutely. a lot of reason not to smile, but there's always a good reason to. As long as you have Jesus, you can always choose that option. Don't make me preach in here, Tim. You about to do it. <laughs> no. All I have to do is just throw a little bit of it out there. And take it. <laughs> Don't do now, it. let's start off the program and get you caught up with today's news with Mike Garofalo. Let's take it away, Mike. The Paycheck Protection Program was designed to help small businesses continue to pay their employees while they were closed due to the coronavirus. Now it turns out, as Fox News is reporting, 37 Planned Parenthood affiliates applied for and received $80 million from that program, and the government is now asking for that money back. The rules for PPP money clearly state affiliates of larger organizations with more than 500 employees are not eligible. Two breach dams caused by several days of rainfall in Michigan has forced 10,000 people from their homes. The first breach happened at the Edenville Dam, located about 140 miles north of Detroit. The second happened about seven miles downriver at the Sanford Dam. The governor said the breaches could lead to the town of Midland being under as much as nine feet of water. This latest evacuation order is the second one in less than 24 hours. The National Weather Service says a slow moving storm system will continue to produce heavy rain and flash flooding across the Appalachians into parts of the southeast and mid-Atlantic through Thursday. The system could bring torrential rains and dangerous flash flood conditions are also very likely. Also, severe thunderstorms are possible today across the northern high plains. And nearly two weeks after the Department of Justice moved to dismiss the case against former Trump National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, the retired lieutenant general's fate is still up in the air. Now Flynn is asking a federal appeals court to accept that request for dismissal by the Department of Justice. Flynn made that request since the district judge handling the case, instead of making a decision, asked a friend of the court to argue against dismissal. Flynn's lawyers, all along with asking for dismissal, also asked that the appointment of a friend of the court be vacated and a different judge be assigned to the case. The United States and Canada have decided to extend their mutual agreement to keep their border closed to non-essential travel to June 1st during the coronavirus pandemic. We know that we need to do more to ensure that uh, travelers who are coming back from, from, uh, from overseas or from the United States as Canadians uh, are properly followed up on, are properly isolated and uh, don't become further vectors for the spread of COVID-19. Essential cross-border workers like healthcare professionals, airline crews and truck drivers are still permitted to cross. The restrictions were initially announced on March 18th and then extended in April. Wearing surgical masks can significantly reduce the spread of COVID-19. That's what a new study out of Hong Kong found. Sky News is reporting a team of scientists learned that the rate of non-contact transmission through respiratory droplets or airborne particles fell by about 75% when masks were used. Researchers also found that if masks were worn by just 50% of the population, the virus would continue to spread. The study by the University of Hong Kong comes while some medical professionals and the World Health Organization have questioned the effectiveness of face coverings. Well, plan to vote on November 3rd or whenever your state's early voting happens. Then watch America Stands, election coverage in the spirit of faith, election night right here on Victory. Back to you in the studio. All right, Mike, thank you very much. John, uh, in that piece that Mike just did, he talked about the floods there in Michigan. And I know this morning during morning prayer, you all mm -hmm. prayed about that. And if you need prayer for that or anything, John, our prayer, sir, prayer department's open, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we have trained prayer ministers who are licensed and not, they're not just licensed. We say that because we want you to know that they're qualified, Yes. but they are anointed to pray with you and pray from the side of victory. You know, when you, when we play, when we um, show our news break, like, like we said before, we kind of joking, but there's so much opportunity to take a downside look at everything that's going on. But I want you to know God is still yes. on the throne. Yes. He's still in control. Yes. 
Yes. He hasn't lost control. <laughs> and we pray like he's in control. We do. You know, we, we, right. we use that vehicle of prayer to make our petitions known yes. to the Father. We go boldly before the throne. And so yeah. that's what those prayer ministers there are. And if you for. need a prayer, if you need prayer, call 877-281-6297. That's the number to call to get one of our prayer ministers. They're there all throughout this program and even after this program. So call anytime they will be able to pray with you. And you mentioned, John, about uh, the fact that you could take a downside to some of these news stories. You know, none of this is news to God. No. None of this is news to him. No. And he knows the end of the story. That's absolutely right. He does. <laughs> he does. You know what? This is a perfect time to tell people about our free product offer. Off, you know? Yes. Because awesome. a lot of the prayer requests that we get are protection related. Sure. And this is yeah. our free product offer this week only under his shadow, finding safety in the refuge of the secret place. It's a three CD set. You can download it absolutely free. Go to govictory.com slash victory update and get your copy. This will change your life. Amen. Well, we have a lot of things going on around here at KCM that we want you to know about. But one of the things we really want you to know about is the KCBC virtual event meeting coming up on May 30th. Take a look at this. Are you interested in learning more about Kenneth Copeland Bible College? We're having a free virtual interest meeting Saturday, May 30th at 5 p.m. Central Time, and you're invited to join us. Go to kcbiblecollege.org slash interest to sign up and attend this free virtual meeting. As you seek God for the next step, let Kenneth Copeland Bible College help prepare you for His plan in your life and ministry. Yeah, once again, that uh, address is kcbiblecollege.org. It's right there on your screen, slash interest if you want to be a part of that uh, virtual meeting. And if you want to be a part of KCBC, you might get taught by this guy. <laughs> that's, that's, you know. <laughs> Listen, a apply anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you should definitely. Oh, I know. Let me tell you something. KCBC is a special place, and we have some awesome students yes. uh, that come through and that are going, that are being groomed to be in ministry. And Absolutely. I mean, my gosh, yeah. the talent that, is, yeah. that God has blessed us with. So you don't want to miss this opportunity. Yeah. Application fees are waived yes. during the interest meeting. So if you apply to KC, to Kenneth Copeland Bible College, you get your application fee waived. You could save some money. So make sure you take advantage of that. Yeah, and we just had our first graduating class and we missed them already. That's right. A great group of people that came through here that first class and you can be part of the next class. So take advantage of that. Well, let's take advantage of the talent that's in this studio with us right now. Hey, Amen. Joy Williams and the band with a camp meet, camp meeting medley. Take it away, guys. Glory to God.
Amen. Glory Jesus is God. mine. Jesus is mine. Yeah. I'm surprised you're still sitting down. You know, there. I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's getting harder and harder to maintain my composure I know. in these programs. Uh, Y'all just, y'all, I think, I think somebody's doing it on purpose. On purpose. Yeah, yeah they just want to see me run. See how, <laughs> Shock them up. Well, if you're at home, get up and run. It's okay. Amen. We, we don't mind it. So <laughs> let's get to our guest. Happy call and his wife, Jeannie, are founders of Agape Church in Little Rock, Arkansas from 1979 to 2014. Happy is also the founder of Victory Television Network. Happy teaches the Word of God with a simplicity that brings a revelation of the character of God. He and Jeannie have traveled worldwide for over 40 years preaching and teaching, and they've recorded several gospel albums. And I might I might put in here, he's one of the nicest and funniest guys you'll ever meet. <laughs> All the way from Arkansas. Hello, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Tim. It's good to be here with you and John. Oh. I was I was about to get up and do a jig just while David and Joy were ministering. But I'm all wired up, so I couldn't move. It was great. <laughs> That's great. Well, you and I were talking uh, before we came on the air. Uh, this nation and this world, really, is going through a shaking right now. And you have a word that God gave you in reference to shaking, <clears throat> don't you? Yeah, Tim, I've been taking notes uh, for the last several months <clears throat> to define terms the body of Christ, I think, is mixed in their information. And it, it affects us negatively if we don't know our foundations, where we came from, what we're supposed to be doing, where we're going. So I wrote some of these terms down. I don't mean to offend anybody, but I want you to listen to these things. Definition of terms relating to the pandemic. Uncertain times. We hear this all the time. In these uncertain times, well, they're not uncertain if you know the Lord. They're not uncertain if you know the Word. But we're all in this together. Uh, no, we're not. Uh, we're not all together. We're not all believing the same thing. Um, God's got this. You hear this quite a bit. What does that mean? Does that mean that God's sitting back and just watching all this? Uh, God wasn't caught by surprise. A lot of people think, okay, why didn't he do something? <laughs> uh, God's using the, the virus for good. James 1.13 says that God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man with evil. So God is not using evil for anything. What Satan meant for evil, uh, God is using for our good. You can always apply that and in, interpret it through James 1.13. Um, then the infamous scripture that you hear all the time, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for our good. Well, you can't interpret that verse unless you uh, add it to verse 26 and 27. Everything that the Holy Spirit prays through you according to the will of God is going to work together for your good. But everything doesn't work together for our good. And then the last thing that I heard was just the other day, I heard a, a minister say that we're experiencing the effects of the fourth horseman of the apocalypse and the sixth seal is being poured out. My brother and sister, you know, <laughs> if you read the book of Revelation, that, is take, that issue takes place in the middle of the great tribulation period, which we are not in. We are not in the middle of the Great Tribulation period. So there is no fourth horseman and sixth seal being poured out. Mm -hmm. Now, what we are experiencing is a shaking. Mm -hmm. Look at Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 26. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we have received a kingdom which cannot be shaken, cannot be moved. The kingdom of God cannot be shaken. Jesus said that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Now, if you go over to Luke's gospel, chapter 6, 
it talks to you about foundations. And it says foundations are based on hearing the Word of God and doing the Word of God. And he used the example of a man who built a house on a rock on the great foundation of hearing the Word and doing what the Word says. And then he gives you the example of a man who built a foundation on sand. And that foundation is based on not hearing the Word and not doing what it said. So we have to examine where's our foundation. We have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. All kinds of kingdoms are being shaken now. Jesus talked about this in Matthew 24. And he said, all these things are the beginning of sorrows, but the end is not yet. He said, these things must come to pass. But we, as born-again believers, we have a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Jesus told Peter, he said, I give you the keys of the kingdom, and the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. You know, pastors are afraid to open their churches, and people are afraid to go to church. People are afraid to go to restaurants. They're afraid to go to work. Fear has no place in the, in the uh, body of Christ. Uh, let me read you some of the kingdoms that have been shaken. Individual lives, wealth, marriages, families, people that have died, banks, governments, businesses, even churches. And the results of the shakings uh, will allow us to see the truth of God's kingdom. And it's so important that those of us of faith, those of us of victory, that we continue to teach the people, that we continue to let them know, here's what the Word says. Here's what the Bible says. Here's what you can count on. Here's what you can depend on. And you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be fearful. In fact, I said this one day. I said, you know, the, pan the pandemic is really not about the virus. The pandemic is about fear. That's the pandemic, the fear that has hit this country and unfortunately hit the churches. Mm -hmm. I have really challenged pastors. You know, when our governor, who is a born-again Christian, opened the churches up, I told the pastors, I said, if you don't open your doors and encourage people to come to church, you'll be just like bowing your knee to Nebuchadnezzar. And church members, if you don't go to church, you know, it's real easy to sit at home and watch on live stream. It's real easy uh, to just, you know, stand in front of a camera. But don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the day approaches. Go to church. Send in your tithes, your offerings, support ministries. Nothing has changed in the kingdom of God. That's the beautiful thing about it. The kingdom of God has not changed. Yeah. The kingdom of God is not being shaken. And um, let, me, let me close out with this, and you might want to respond to some of these things. Uh, you can find the reasons for the shaking in Proverbs 1 and Romans 1. Um, in, in the book of Job, it says that Job broke his hedge down with fear. God had put a hedge around about him. Ecclesiastes says, if you break a hedge, a serpent will bite you. We've broken down our hedge in America with two things. We've broken God's law through killing 60 million babies in the womb, abortion, and a homosexual uh, agenda which is an abomination to God. And a lot of preachers don't want to talk about that, but that's how we broke our hedge down. The thing that is coming against the countries is because we have allowed that hedge to be broken. And we've got to stand up against that. Now, uh, I'll throw it back to you, Tim. you have any questions yeah, or anything else that I you'd do, like actually. me I to address? Pick up, I want to pick up on something you were talking about there. You know, uh, you were saying uh, one of the things that people say is God's got this. The other thing they say is God is in control. And he's really, he's really not in control if we don't give him control. And I think we've given control over in the church to, as you said, fear. We've, we've allowed fear to come in. And I think we don't know who we are in Christ and who we are as Americans here in this country. We've allowed things to happen to us and allowed things to be put on us in the church that just aren't right and they aren't constitutional, are they, Happy? Well, we're, we're kind of caught in betwixt two. 
we want to be obedient to the laws of the land. We want to support our government. Our governor is a born-again Christian. I sent him an email the other day, and I said, you know, it's not right for the uh, beauty salons, barber shops, tattoo parlors to be open and the church to be closed. The next week, he opened the churches. We're trying to be obedient. He doesn't want to arrest anybody or put anybody in jail. And he made a promise. He said, there's nobody going to be checking on you to see if you're six feet apart or if you've got on a mask. He said, we want the churches to be open. But if the pastors don't respond to that, uh, then the church members are not going to respond to it. So you're trying to obey the laws of the land, but you've also got to obey the word of God. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. It's easier to sit at home and watch TV. It's easier to sit at home and watch the Internet. It's easier for pastors uh, to do virtual uh, church meetings or conferences. But what God wants us to do is He wants us to continue. I don't believe that we should accept what's going on now as the new normal. There you go. We, sh we have, we have the, the Bible tells us what normal is. And so while we're, we're trying to uh, obey the laws of the land, we have a greater responsibility to, to obey God and to obey His Word. But we have to know that God's not our problem. Right. God's not judging us. He's not sending the virus to correct us. I had, had one lady said, well, you know, one thing the virus has done is brought our family closer together and we've been able to pray together. Well, that could have been initiated by the Holy Spirit, probably was, and you just didn't act on it. Yeah. God doesn't use sickness and disease, plagues and pestilence to train us and guide us. We shouldn't be motivated by that to even be revived. Yeah. We are revived by the Spirit of God not yeah, by a pandemic, right. yeah. uh, or else if you respond to the pandemic, you responded to the wrong thing. Yeah. I know, uh, Pastor Happy, okay. that, that you have you have pastors that you mentor and people that look up to you. Take about three or four minutes here to talk to people about what are you telling the pastors that are underneath your leadership and people just around the country and around the world about how to go forward, how to deal with what we're dealing with and how to come out of this thing on the other side better than we were. Well, <clears throat> our church is uh, uh, obeying the request that the governor sent down, um, but we uh, are not uh, stopping holding church services. Uh, we have people seated every other pew and uh, six feet apart. Uh, the offering bucket is out in the middle of the auditorium uh, where people can go and put their tithes and offerings in. Um, we've ha uh, uh, gone to two services on Sunday morning. Uh, for those that want to come at 9 and then those that want to come at 1030. We've made adjustments, but we haven't changed our our uh, vision and our focus. And I encourage pastors to be very careful about that. Our church is the only one uh, that is open and holding services in, in, our, uh, in our city. Uh, the other churches are still closed. Well, we have a, we have a responsibility a calling and an assignment, and that has not changed. So you just need to be encouraged. You're trying to uh, be respectful of, of the requests of the governor and the officials, but you're also uh, not uh, failing to fulfill your assignment. So I encourage pastors and churches to, to, to get back to uh, where they were and continue in faith. I mean, we're faith people. And people need to see the demonstration of our faith out in public. Amen. 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 Before we let you go, sir, would you take a moment and just pray uh, over our viewers, over our audience, over pastors and uh, people that have been affected by this as we go forward? Yeah. Father, I pray right now for the, for the spirit of the anointing uh, to come upon pastors, to come upon church members, uh, ministers, I pray, Father, that you would stir people up to continue supporting their church, their tithes, their offerings. Continue supporting ministries like Kenneth Copeland Ministries, uh, Traveling Ministries. Uh, I pray for the pastors to have a spirit of boldness upon them. And the anointing destroys the yokes and removes the burdens. I thank you, Father, for your anointing to deliver people from fear and anxiety and worry. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Pastor. I look forward to the day that we can see you in person again at one of our meetings and, uh, and hug you. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that, Tim. All right. Thank God you, sir. You. If you guys want to know any more uh, about Pastor Happy and his ministry, it's vtntv.com is the website. vtntv.com is the website that you want to go to. And speaking of going to church, uh, we're having church here this week. Yeah. This you Sunday, know, aren't we? You know, we are. And I was, I was so just ministered to by what Pastor Happy just ministered because he talked about the church being the church. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the church being the church, rising up and being the body of Christ and taking the authority that we have and actually, you know, doing something. And you can do that right here in the Fort Worth area. We'll have a drive-in service right here on the property of Eagle Mountain International Church. Uh, this coming uh, Sunday morning, you can join us 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, and we want to invite you, you know, if you can't, if you can't come in person, make sure you join us on our website site and or uh, any of our social media outlets but yep. if you're here and you're local and you can do it we want to enjoy we don't want to encourage you to get here yeah that again that is sunday morning at 11 a.m eastern with that drive drive-in service now tonight here on the victory channel home group your home group will be on the air at 8 7 central so you want to make sure you join us for that then tomorrow morning We'll be on the air with morning prayer at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. You don't want to miss that every Monday through Friday at the same time. And then we'll be back here tomorrow with Victory Update at 5 p.m. Eastern. Tomorrow's scheduled guest, Dr. Don Colbert. So you don't want to miss that. We're going to let Joy and David play out today. And Jonathan, these guys have blessed us so much today. And we'll bless you on the way out. Join us again tomorrow, everybody. Remember, Jesus is Lord and we love you.